In the vast sun-baked plains of northwest Victoria, a colossal power plant was built, a sea of 718,000 glass panels covering an area large enough to hold 275 Melbourne cricket grounds. This giant was designed to generate 200 megawatts of clean electricity, enough to power over 133,500 homes. But as construction began, engineers discovered an invisible threat lurking in the power lines, a mysterious instability that could have turned their multi-million dollar investment into a worthless field of glass. The entire project, a cornerstone of the state's green energy future, was on the verge of failure before it could send a single watt to the grid. What was this hidden force, and how did engineers find a solution in a century-old piece of technology? Our story begins in 2017, when the government of Victoria, Australia, made a historic promise. They passed the Renewable Energy Act, a law that legally bound the state to a cleaner future. The targets were ambitious, 25% of all electricity from renewable sources by 2020, and a massive 40% by 2025. This new law was like a starting gun, and international energy companies began racing to build new wind and solar projects in the state. One of the biggest players to answer the call was Total Erin, a global power producer with deep pockets and experience building huge projects all over the world. Their team scouted for the perfect location and found it near the small rural town of Uyen, a flat, sun-drenched landscape ideal for a solar farm of unprecedented scale. The project was named the Kiamal Solar Farm and it was set to become the largest in Victoria. But this perfect spot for sunshine had a critical hidden flaw. The land was ready, the money was secured, and the government was supportive, but a problem buried deep within the state's old electrical infrastructure was about to bring the entire project to a grinding halt. The engineers had run into an invisible wall, a fundamental weakness in the electricity grid itself. The power network in northwest Victoria was notoriously long, thin and fragile. Some grid experts even called it the rhombus of regret because of its shape on a map and its inability to handle new power sources. The technical term for the problem was low system strength. A strong grid is like a massive heavy spinning wheel. Its own weight and momentum, called inertia, make it incredibly stable and hard to disturb. A weak grid, on the other hand, is like a small, lightweight spinning top. The slightest push can make it wobble out of control. For decades, Australia's grid got its strength from a few enormous coal and gas power plants, which use gigantic, heavy spinning turbines that act like those heavy flywheels, keeping the whole system balanced. A solar farm is the complete opposite. It has no moving parts. It uses silent, solid-state electronic devices called inverters to generate power which adds zero physical inertia to the system. Trying to connect a 200 megawatt solar farm to this weak part of the grid was like attaching a fire hose to a delicate teacup. The sudden flood of electronic power with no inertia to absorb the shock would cause wild voltage swings and dangerous oscillations that could damage equipment across the network and even trigger blackouts. The Australian Energy Market Operator, or AEMO, which acts as the grid's referee, warned that without a solution, the Kiamal farm would be so heavily restricted, it would be practically useless. The invisible wall seemed unbreakable. The solution came not from a new microchip, but from a piece of heavy old-school engineering. The team decided to build a giant artificial heartbeat for the grid, a synchronous condenser. A synchronous condenser is essentially a massive electric motor that isn't connected to anything. Its only job is to spin. By spinning in perfect time with the grid's frequency, its immense rotating mass provides the physical inertia the system was missing. It acts like a giant shock absorber, smoothing out voltage spikes and dips, giving the weak grid the strength it needs to handle the solar farm's power. The scale of this machine was staggering. Built by Siemens in Germany, it was a 190 megavolt ampere reactive machine. The entire assembly weighs a colossal 221 tons, more than the largest blue whale. Just getting it to the remote site was a monumental task. It was shipped across the ocean to Port Adelaide in South Australia, then carefully loaded onto a specialised multi-wheeled truck for a slow, heavy journey of hundreds of kilometres by road to Uyen. It was the first time a machine like this had ever been installed at a major solar farm in Australia. 
a piece of 20th century heavy metal brought in to save a 21st century power plant. With the grid's heartbeat secured, the team could finally build the powerhouse it was designed to protect. The Kiamal Solar Farm covers 500 hectares, an area that could fit over 275 Melbourne cricket grounds. On this vast field, workers installed 718,000 individual solar panels. These were high-efficiency QMAX CS3 U-P polycrystalline modules from Canadian Solar. Each panel measures about 2 meters long by 1 meter wide and weighs over 22 kilograms. The term polycrystalline means the silicon in each cell is made from multiple crystals, a cost-effective way to produce reliable panels. They also use an innovative technology called Low Internal Current, or LIC, which helps the panels run cooler and produce more power, especially on hot sunny days. These 718,000 panels don't just sit flat. They are mounted on a single axis tracking system supplied by Arctech Solar. These trackers are the unsung heroes of the farm. Like thousands of giant metal sunflowers, they slowly tilt the panels throughout the day, following the sun's path across the sky. This simple movement can increase the annual energy output by up to 30% compared to a fixed installation. The system uses smart backtracking algorithms that use artificial intelligence to prevent panels from casting shadows on each other in the early morning and late afternoon, squeezing out even more power. The direct current, or DC, electricity from the panels flows through thousands of kilometers of specialized underground cables supplied by Nexans. These Kelios cables are designed to withstand decades of exposure to extreme temperatures and UV radiation. The power is gathered and sent to the farm's electronic brains, 150 separate solar inverters. Each of these units converts the raw DC power from the panels into alternating current, or AC, the type of electricity that flows through the grid. From the inverters, the power is sent to two enormous 180 megavolt ampere transformers which were proudly built locally in Victoria by Wilson's Transformers. These machines step up the voltage to a staggering 220,000 volts, allowing the electricity to be transmitted efficiently over long distances. Finally, this high-voltage power flows into the purpose-built Kayamal Terminal Station, connecting to the national grid to power the state. Building a pioneering project of this size and complexity is never easy and the immense technical and financial pressures soon created very real human challenges. The total project cost around $300 million, funded by a mix of debt from major banks like ANZ, ING, and NATIXIS, and a $51 million equity stake from the Australian government's Clean Energy Finance Corporation. The main construction contract was awarded to a consortium that included a company called Biosar Australia, However, during the project, Biosar and its Greek parent company, Elactor, ran into severe financial trouble, reporting losses of over 113 million euros from their Australian solar projects. This was partly due to the high costs and unexpected delays associated with the grid connection issues. This corporate crisis had a devastating impact on the local community. In 2020, it was reported that 26 small businesses and subcontractors in and around Uyen were left with at least $290,000 in unpaid bills after contractors working for Biosar collapsed. Hardware stores, local suppliers, and family-owned businesses were left out of pocket, creating a negative image for a project that was meant to bring economic benefits. In the end, the project developer, Total Aaron, had to step in and take over management with the help of a local Victorian company, Bayon, to get the farm finished. The project also faced some local debate about the use of agricultural land for solar generation, a common concern in rural communities weighing food security against energy needs. While studies show that even a massive rollout of solar would use a tiny fraction of Australia's farmland, the visual impact and the principle of converting productive land remain a point of contention for some residents. In the end, the Kayamal Solar Farm is much more than just Victoria's biggest solar power plant. It is a landmark of engineering problem-solving. It stands as a physical monument to the challenges of transitioning from an old energy world to a new one by resurrecting a piece of 20th century technology to unlock the power of the 21st. Its engineers created a blueprint for how to build the clean energy future 
on a grid that was built for the past. If you found this look inside the Kayamul Solar Farm fascinating, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more deep dives into incredible engineering projects, and ring that notification bell so you never miss an update. Let us know in the comments what we should cover next.